Oh, oh, oh. Stop, so low. That was scary, guys. I'm scared. All right. Hey, YouTube. Today, we're doing the second ever keyboard review on this channel. So, as you can see here on the desk, we have the Drunk Dare A75. Now, I don't know why the one I got sent says M75 here on the corner, but the model is supposed to be the A75. So, the quick intro is that this is the best sounding and feeling regular pre-built keyboard I have tried to date. Yes, the best. And it's also the second, or I consider the second slash third best performing gaming keyboard on the market, because it is supposed to be designed as a gaming keyboard. And it's insanely cheap. So automatically, this has become the single best value keyboard you can possibly buy as of now. Maybe there are other keyboards out there that I haven't tried or small brands and things like that. But from my knowledge of gaming peripherals, at least, this is it. And we'll talk more about that later. You guys are probably thinking, oh, what about the wooding and stuff? And I'll have some comparisons about that. Please do note, I am not the biggest keyboard expert. So if any of you keyboard enthusiasts come and want to provide feedback or have a discussion or something, I'm more than happy to learn from you guys and, you know, have a conversation. As I like to do, we're going to have a story time. Now, Drunk Dare initially contacted me via email that I put on my YouTube channel asking me if I wanted to review this item. Some of their emails even went into my spam, right? The most important email they sent me, which is, okay, we'll send you the unit, can you provide me your shipping address, was the email that got moved into my spam because they asked me for my details and Gmail was like, that's dangerous, that could be spam, they're trying to get your information. When they first contacted me, I'm like, who the hell is this? Like, this is sus, bro. So I looked up on their website and I was like, okay, yeah, they make keyboards, uh, I'll review this, seems interesting enough. I thought it was going to be like a wooding clone or something, you know, knockoff Chinese wooding. And then I gave him my address and other information because, you know, why would I not provide my personal details to dodgy Chinese places? That's just something I have to do, right? Later on, the keyboard came and I am impressed. I thought I do need to put a disclaimer for this video that all thoughts and opinions are my own. I have not been paid to review this keyboard other than having this keyboard sent to me. Drunk Gear have been pushing me a bit to make this video. Video is also just a review of this product, so I'm not going to endorse the company in any way. They are a new company. I don't know about their reputation, their new startup, so take that as you will. We'll move into details and unboxing. As you can see, the keyboard would have come in a box that just looks like this. Like I said before, it's supposed to be the A75, not the M75, so this might just be a typo or something. Trunk Dare is a new Chinese startup making keyboards, so you can think of them as like a Lamzu for keyboards or something like that. And they advertise themselves as expert in non-mechanical switch keyboard. Now, in this case, a non-mechanical switch keyboard. So this keyboard is a magnetic switch. Now, maybe in the future they'll have opticals, who knows, right? But anything that's not mechanical, clearly. So it costs 150 US dollars. Now that would be about 230 Australian dollars, but currently it's on pre-order. So it is on discount. It is 130 US dollars slash about 200 Australian dollars. In the box, you would get what the keyboard would be right here. Just some of the extras that are standard. So a few more keycaps, switch puller, and their own USB cable, which I have not yet used. But interesting enough, the USB cable is actually a USB-C with a C to A adapter. So this is quite a little neat feature. I like that. The keyboard is a 75% layout with a volume knob on the top right. And there are two FN keys. So we'll talk more about what the second FN key is for later. There is no numpad, even though it's 75%, but it has all the important keys. Like, let's be real, who actually uses a numpad these days, right? I missed my function keys on my wooding 60%. I don't care about the numpad. Oh, and the delete key is super important, which is also here. So these are my important keys that I needed. So I'm happy about that. It comes pre-lubed and has foam on the inside. The keycaps are ABS keycaps. You can easily replace this, but I actually personally quite like how they feel. Now, they're probably not the highest quality. I can't really judge or comment on that, but I don't think these feel that bad at all. The keyboard can't be modded, and they also don't recommend taking it apart either or even trying to mod it. So you will have to use this keyboard as it is. Uh, you can change the keycaps, so obviously. The keyboard is surprisingly lightweight. I didn't actually put this on a scale, but you can probably find some information later. In fact, this might be a bit lighter than most gaming keyboards on the market even. It doesn't feel heavy at all, but the build quality actually feels all right. It's nothing too amazing, nothing too bad. I mean, you, what can you really expect of a plastic keyboard like this? That's pretty cheap. Weight isn't everything in a keyboard's build quality, but this does feel okay for how much it weighs. You know, if it was heavier, it'd probably feel a bit better, but it's good as it is. 
Now, I can't comment on the durability of like electronic parts inside this keyboard, whether that's the PCB or the switches in that. But given that the switches are just a magnet, it's unlikely the switches will have any fault. The PCB is what we have to worry about more. Only time will tell if this will break easily or not. Their website does need a lot of work still, so unfortunately, I can't comment too much on that. The tilt angle, if you flip the little feet on the bottom, is 10 degrees. That's really steep, right? This is a very, very steep tilted keyboard if you were to toggle those feet. Personally, I don't mind it, and I do use the tilt when I play games and stuff, but some of you might find this a little bit difficult to adjust, just something to be aware of. I do think you should be using tilt when you play games because you're very likely to fat finger the space bar when you're trying to press the bottom row keys, or at least that's what I do in the case that the keyboard is flat. Because if you think about like here, I'm pressing down the V key and then the rest of my thumb just pushes down on the space bar. Especially if you set the space bar to be super sensitive and low actuation, then that gentle tap on it could cause you to jump. Which has happened to me before in video games quite a bit in Val. When I see someone or I'm trying to come to the team by pressing V and I just jump and die. More details about this keyboard can be found on their website. I'll link their website in the description. You guys can go look that up. They have some like pictures, explanations, all of that, you know, the generic stuff, and you can see how the keyboard is built. I'm not the biggest fan. I don't really care about that as much. I'm just going to take the item as it is. There is supposed to be a software. Now, unfortunately, I have not yet been able to test the software because it's not ready at the time of this video. But both Drunk Dare and myself wanted to put this video out ASAP to let you guys know about it. Now, obviously, they want to market this as early as possible, get as many people on it because they're a company and they need to do that. As for why I want to put this out, it's because there is that discount right now. So I hope you guys can get in and get it cheaper than the retail price for after it comes out, obviously. So I hope that will be of help to you guys. Now, if I manage to get a referral code or a discount code or something, I will also put that in the description so you guys can go and get that. I'm going to talk about the software features in the review like it's been promised, but I genuinely don't even use software for peripherals anymore, whether that's mice or keyboards. So I found the keyboard perfectly fine to be used without any software. I don't need to touch anything. So it doesn't really bother me, but there are obviously things you can do on the software that I'll mention that will be implemented. Start with the most important, the switches and layout. These are magnetic switches also using the Hall effect. Unfortunately, I don't have a switch that I can pull out to show you guys. But if you want more details on what the Hall effect is, go watch the wooding video. That's where I explained everything a lot more in depth. Essentially, there is no physical contact between metal parts to actuate. It's just a magnet on the switch that goes down as you press it. And on the PCB, there should be a sensor that detects the magnet entering the magnetic field. And that's how you generate a signal. And then it will actuate based off that. So the actuation point that you can set these keys to is between 0.4 millimeters and up to 3.6 millimeters. The keyboard comes with nine presets that you can switch between without even needing to go on the software, which is what the FN2 key is for. So if you press FN2 and press one up to nine with the numbers, that will set the actuation point. So every increment is 0.4 millimeters with the lowest being 0.4 millimeters on one and the highest at 3.6 on nine. So if you look at the video right now, if I press on the key, you'll see it do a little blink to indicate that it has switched to that preset. Do note that even 0.4 mm can be almost too sensitive in a lot of cases to play video games or especially to type on. You can also switch the layout between a Mac and Windows layout. Now I've never needed to use a Mac layout, so I don't even understand what that is. But if you guys do have a Mac and you want to use this on a Mac PC as well, you can switch between keyboard layouts. And once again, that's what the FN2 key here is for. FN2 W for Windows or FN2 M for Mac. Obviously, if you go into software, you can probably set actuation point based off in the software as well, and you can implement more features to use with the FN and FN2 key. You can set more layers and all of that. So whatever you want to do with it. Low actuation point and what's the benefit? Well, keys register faster, quicker, a lot more responsive, and it's mostly noticeable in games. The springs on the switch are 55 grams. So unlike the stock rooting, which is 60, these are 55. And the switches are also looped. They're all pre-looped. That pre-loop makes these switches feel significantly better to type on than the wooting by a mile. It's not even close. The keys do feel a little bit harder to press down on than the wooting does, but that's because of the lube creating a little bit of resistance in the stroke. That is a placebo effect, however, because spring tension probably does matter more on this case. As for sound and typing experience, I said it in the intro and I'll say it again. This is the best feeling and sounding keyboard I have tried to date in terms of pre-built gaming keyboards. Let's just say it's a gaming keyboard. The aesthetic doesn't look like it's a gaming keyboard. I honestly prefer this now over the gaming keyboard look. I used to like the gamer look when I was a kid. Oh, RGBs, all oh, fancy things. Oh, I love the Razer stuff. But now, now we're moving on, right? We're growing, we're maturing, we're getting to a different stage in our life. And that's where now I start appreciating this. 
here is a quick sound test of typing on the keyboard. I'll also do a typing test of my modded wooting. It's not lubed though. And unfortunately, I have to record this using my PC webcam because that's what's connected to the PC. And I'll use the actual good microphone I have up here that you guys can't see instead of this uh, phone microphone. All right, welcome to the first ever sound test. I am giving this a second recording because I realized when I did the first one, it was on low gain and I had an EQ going on. I do want to do this on low gain because there's this ambient noise, but the quality wasn't that good. So we are using high gain on the microphone. But we'll start with the Drunk Deer A75 here. Got a bit of that nice talky into it. And now for the modded wooting. Typing also feels good. I just can't think of any keyboard I've used from a readily available brand on the market that compares to this in sound and feel. You'd have to enter the custom keyboard territory to compete with this. And that means you'll probably be spending easily three times the price. So now moving to gaming performance, because I'm not the big keyboard enthusiast, I'm, I'm the gaming person, right? And the performance in games is honestly great. It's to be expected of the magnetic switch and low actuation point. Now the keyboard operates smoothly in every game I tried it in, played well, and there's just nothing to complain about. It was generally solid and reliable. Unfortunately, not many other technical specifications were shared with me or available on their website yet. There's just a lot of mystery behind the keyboard. And I can't really give you any data in terms of speed or this or that, aside from the actuation point. But just based off my subjective experiences to myself, it performs well. The only keyboard that beats this in performance for games is the wooting due to the wooting features. That leads me to talk about the comparison versus the wooting because the most important thing now is we just compare keyboards. We've set the fact that the wooting is just the best performing gaming keyboard and so everything else just needs to be compared to that. In a comparison to the wooting, the wooting outperforms this keyboard in gaming performance. Now this is a no-brainer. The crown is definitely still with wooting here for gaming performance. Wooting switches go down to 0.1 millimeter actuation point. The A75 here only goes down to 0.4. Both of those are still a bit too sensitive, but nonetheless, that is still an advantage that the wooting here has. It is a bit impractical though, I will say. The main difference separator here is that wooting has rapid trigger and tachyon mode, while this keyboard does not have any of those features. So if you're more curious about what rapid trigger and tachyon mode is on the wooting, go watch the wooting video again, because that's where I explained it more in detail. But the short summary is that rapid trigger means keys instantly deregister when being lifted up because the sensor detects a weakened magnetic strength. And tachyon mode is putting the keyboard into overdrive and making it have faster response time. The magnetic switches on the A75 here have the potential for rapid trigger because the fundamental way that these keyboards function is the same behind the two of them. However, rapid trigger has not been implemented onto the A75, whether that's due to a PCB issue or whatever an issue. So Wooting does still have the advantage there. Now, I also tested if this had rapid trigger or not because that information wasn't provided. I went down and did a movement test. And as you guys can see now on the screen. All right, guys. So this is how I confirmed that the Drunk Deer A75 does not have rapid trigger. So, the keyboard does play pretty well, as you can see in this. The movements register pretty consistently, the movements are smooth, and I can hit my shots as I need it to. However, to test what rapid trigger, you spam one direction key to see if the movement ends up chaining into a run. So here's me on the Drunk Deer A75 spamming my D key, and as you can see, the movements aren't stuttery. There are times when I'm suddenly chained into a run because the keys are registering a bit more consistently and therefore going into like a constant movement. So this is on the 0.4 mm actuation, the most sensitive one you can get. And now I'll switch over to the Wooting and you can experience the same thing. You'll see that the character only stutters and it will never chain into a constant run because as soon as I lift the movement key, the registration of that keystroke will be ended. So here's me spamming the D and A keys on the Wooting 60HE. And as you can see, it's just a nice perma stutter on the key. As long as I tap it, it moves. If I let go, it does not move. And therefore, you get this perma stutter motion. That means that movement is never chained into a constant run. 
and that is how you test between rapid trigger and no rapid trigger which is probably the biggest feature of wooting that makes it so good at video games not that the low actuation point is the biggest difference maker it's this rapid trigger feature that instantly deregisters the other advantage that the wooting 60 he has is that it can be modded now mainly it's a case swap but you can also switch the keycaps you can lube the switches and do all of those things that you can mod it a75 here cannot be modded However, the A75 is already pre-lubed and stuff, so taking away the lube, at least the wooting can be case swapped into a nice case. You can't do that with the A75. The wooting is still definitely the better full sweat, raw gaming performance gamer keyboard, right? If that's all you're chasing after, the best performance possible, you get the wooting. And, or if you wanted to get a 60% gaming keyboard that you can also mod. However, there are also benefits of the Drunk Dare A75 here that it has over the wooting. So the first of all is, the price. The A75 is cheaper than the Wooting, pretty much significantly cheaper than most competition on the market right now by a large percentage. Additionally, there is no wait time or stock issues and stuff that the Wooting usually has. Now, I know Wooting is working towards solving that, but as of right now, I think there is still a bit of an accessibility issue with the Wooting. The A75 also sounds and feels significantly better than the Wooting, even compared to my modded Wooting, it still sounds and feels better. Also, the A75 is in a 75% layout, whereas the wooting only comes in 60 and 100%. Now, that was one of the main reasons I put off getting a wooting for the longest time, because they didn't offer 75 or 80%. But with that being said, wooting has teased a 75 to 80% keyboard, but there's currently no information about it at all. Not sure when it's going to come out, not sure when announcements are, don't quote me on this. The A75 also performs only marginally worse, I think majority of the gaming population are not skilled enough to the point where the wooting is the significant difference maker towards your gameplay and therefore the a75 is still worth considering in comparison to the other keyboard i can think of on the market which is the apex pro the apex pro has been hailed as one of the best gaming keyboards before the existence of the wooting and currently it's still the best readily available keyboard as the wooting isn't something you can just go in and buy walk into a store you know wooting has limited stock you have to order on their website for the apex pro i can just walk into the local store and just pick one up also the apex pro does come in all form factors 60 80 100 but let's be real who uses a full size now it's 60 percent or tkr only in my opinion the a75 completely replaces the purpose of the Apex Pro on the market. So the new SteelSeries Omni.2.0 switches that they have been putting into their new Apex Pros, and that has actuation that goes down to 0.2 millimeters. The old Omni Point was 0.4 millimeters to 3.6 millimeters, which means that the Omni Point 2.0 is slightly better than the 1.0. The A75 here has the exact same switch specifications as the Omni Point 1.0, the first version that was used. That does mean that the second version is slightly better, but like I said before, 0.2 is probably a bit impractical. So honestly, 0.4 actuation is perfectly fine. There honestly is little to no difference between those. And therefore, I still consider the performance of those switches to be the same. With that being said, the Apex Pro is also one of the most expensive gaming keyboards on the market. And I think here in Australia, the Apex Pros with Omni.2.0 aren't even available yet. Right? I had a look online, I looked up Apex Pro, and they were selling for between 340 to 400 Australian dollars, about twice the price of a Drunk Deer A75, and they were all still using the Omni Point 1.0s, which perform the exact same. So you can basically buy the Apex Pro for $200 in the form of the A75. And with that being said, the Drunk Deer A75 completely destroys the Apex Pro in typing feel and sound. There's just no competition about it while being cheaper. In that case, in that comparison, this is a no-brainer. The A75 wins hands down, right, hands down. So who should buy this? If you want the best feeling and sounding keyboard without going into expensive custom keyboard setups, that is also somehow, essentially, the second best performing gaming keyboard on the market, while being cheaper than everything else, this is it. It's just a no-brainer, like, I can't describe this. Like, I didn't know what to expect when it came to me, and I am impressed, I am very impressed, I'm back. <laughs> That's the end of the review. There's not much more I need to say about it. You guys can just go pick one up and try one yourself. They're really not that expensive compared to other peripherals you can buy these days, right? Mice are probably only like $20, $30 cheaper than this sometimes. Once again, I would like to thank Drunk Deer for giving me this review opportunity and congratulations to them for making a phenomenal product. So I will keep my eyes out on their future releases, see how they grow as a company and whether 
they do well enough for me to be confident that I can recommend their company instead of just saying that this is a good product. Because right now, while I can say that this product is amazing, I can't give you guys confidence in terms of customer support warranty and all of that and just all, all around company rep. But this product is phenomenal. So thank you guys for watching and catch you in the next one.